until I saw one crawling limp step across a half-lit street. The night had changed them somehow, the way darkness alters portraits on the walls, cracked closet doors, and creaks in old houses. On my dresser sits a glass tree, small as a hand, where two possums rest upside down, their tails questioning the window light passing through. It's been sort of like how you would measure time, um, think, and memory. It's called Calico Street. The dark cannot be measured with hands the way a room can be marked with feet shoe steadily in front of shoe, the way a fingernail doesn't grow straight across, but in a sort of moon, matching the center at its root. The night will not be kept. Night is calico there and held high enough on a linden tree. The shadows of our legs stop short of the road. We have no feet, no leaving in the night, lit with orange lamps and bricks. Without knowing the extent, I kissed you back in a tiny room that was barely lit. This one too, I would say, is connecting, um, lingering to time and somehow like dreaming to a lingering state. It's called plaster dust. Not everyone holds their dreams, but my brother remembers being three years old, kneeing through plaster dust when the upstairs was being carved out of the attic. I would have been five and dreamed last night that he covered my face, one small hand over each of my eyes. I wasn't five, though, like you think. Being older didn't make sense when I opened my eyes. But dreams are gods who make seas in an afternoon, a million species of laughter in an hour, the kind of vine that spills onto a street in minutes, up a freeway wall, across a chicken fence, the length of a lover's name. Dreams need room, a forgotten place to remember us with. I realize that now that I've picked out a bunch of poems that have some connection with my grandmother. Um, this one is about this elephant named Joy that lived um, at the zoo in Greenville, South Carolina. And I, every time we would visit, I would always ask my grandmother if we could go to the zoo and see Joy. And so sometime, I guess it was when I was a freshman in college, she sent me this newspaper clipping that, um, that Joy had died. So I just remember thinking, um, I don't know, I was pretty, I was sad about, about hearing that news and um, wrote this poem to talk about, um, so, I mean, I don't go to the zoo much anymore and it seems to have their own problems or whatever, keeping animals in the zoo, but as a kid I remember it was a different kind of experience. Joy the Elephant, Greenville Zoo, 1990. Her cage was the one at the top of the hill. Pool dirty with upcountry clay, two tires scattered in dust, a few blocks of hay to keep the ground from running when it rained. Thick skinned and dry, a beast which Aristotle wrote, passeth all others in wit and mind. Accompanied the lonely river my grandmother walked my brother and me some Saturdays. She danced by herself in the rise and fall of a one, two, three, the drag of her feet, her heavy trunk and tusks in the afternoon. In the mail years later, my grandmother wrote that Joy had died. A newspaper photograph showed her gait, her widening eyes, she looked quite weightless, as I remember her, a sort of waltz in her thighs.